Welcome to this painting tutorial. How's it going everyone? Welcome to this video. In this video I'm going to paint a Primarius Space Wolf from the Fangs of Ulvrich set for Kill Team. But this scheme can also be used to paint your Space Wolves on the Tooth and Claw starter set or any other variation of Space Wolves you desire. This guide is fairly straightforward and the method to paint it is easy. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and with all that said, let's get started. I'm going to start by priming the model in grey, for that I'm going to use Vallejo's surface primer grey through an airbrush, you can use any other primer that you like, uh, I would recommend using grey or white, you can use Corex white or any other primer like that because the first base color is going to be very light and we need a light base coat to make that easier. I'm going to start by giving the model a base coat of rust grey, this is the main color for the armor and I'm going to use this color over all of the areas of the model that are going to be armored and uh, just make sure to thin it down a little bit and give it a quick base coat and uh, if it doesn't cover that well just leave it like that let it dry and apply a second one after it's dried i think i applied two of them because uh, even though it's a very light base um, primer and, then I'm, and i'm applying a very light tone uh, it doesn't cover 100 percent you need to let it dry and apply a second one and um, make sure just to apply it everywhere uh, also, you could use a spray can primer that it's gray, like a one from the Army Painter range. That it's a very similar to similar to rust gray. You can use that. That's going to be a very similar result and a little bit quicker. Uh, but if you don't have it, you can do it like this. Once it's done, you can move on to painting the black. And I'm going to use Vallejo model color black, but you can use Abaddon black or any other black paint you like. I'm going to use this to all of the armor joints in between the armor pieces like behind the elbow, behind the knee pad and all of these places on the torso and places like that and also I'm going to paint some of the areas that are going to end up looking silver because it's easier to cover silver over black than over white and it looks better, I don't know why but uh, I'm going to do that and be very careful not to paint on the armor plates uh, as well and also uh, make sure to thin down all of your colors that you're using in this miniature and all of your miniatures just enough so it flows easily but not too much that it doesn't cover that well and uh, yeah that's it I also painted a pattern on one of the shoulder pads uh, which is just a couple stripes like a tiger kind of pattern and uh, that's just easy just uh, have a thin down black paint so it flows easily on the tip of your brush just do two lines that meet on, uh, on a point and then fill out the middle part with black and that's it. Once it's done, I'm going to move on to paint the leather and for that I'm going to use Rhinox Hide and this is exactly the same process as with the blacks uh, but with the brown and we're going to thin down this color a little bit just to make it flow easily and not uh, cover any detail or create paint crumbs or anything like that and I'm going to just to start painting all of these pouches uh, very carefully not to paint on the blue and very carefully to pick up those belts as well as I can. These are mainly just on the hips and on the chest piece where it holds the grenades. After that I'm going to use Averland Sunset and with this color I'm going to paint the shoulder pad on the left of this model. Uh, this shoulder pad is yellow so I'm going to use this base color to base coat it. And uh, you're going to need at least two coats. The first coat is going to look a little bit green because it's going to look a little bit transparent and the blue, if you painted any blue on the shoulder pad, is going to, is going to look green. It's okay, leave it like that. Uh, don't move it around once you lay the first coat because if you do, you're going to break that coat and create crumbs and paint strokes. So try to be patient, just apply one coat and let it dry and then apply a second one once it's uh, dry. Once it's done, I'm going to use Bugman's Glow and with this color I'm going to paint the skin just being very careful not to paint the headset or piece that goes on the jaw or the back of the helmet which is another piece of uh, blue um, armor and uh, just try to paint uh, around the face without touching those areas and that's it. As well, use thin down paint uh, because you want to preserve that detail. Once it's done, I'm going to use Mornfang Brown and with this color I'm going to paint just the hair and that's pretty much it for this model, only the hair is going to be painted with this color. Uh, you can use it for fur or any other things like that. 
uh, but for this model it's just the hair. After that I'm going to continue base coating and this time I'm going to paint all of the metallic areas that are silver. For that I'm going to use lead belcher and I'm going to shake this bottle especially well because uh, metallic paints tend to separate a lot more. All of your paint should be shaken well before use, but metallics especially, uh, so that you apply them uh, effectively. And uh, I'm going to start picking up all of the places that are going to be silver, such as the grenades, the gun, the knife, and any other place that you want to be silver, just to start picking those out. I'm completely happy using a fine detail brush for all of these areas, a small layer brush, you can use that and uh, thin down the color well so it flows into the recesses that you want to paint. If you use thick paint, it's going to be a lot harder. Uh, but yeah, just, uh, just pick all of, the, all of the areas that you want to be silver with this color and you're good. Once it's done, I'm going to apply the last uh, base coat that is going to be Retributor Armor. This is a very yellow gold. And I'm going to use this on just the small details here and there that are like uh, decorative, decorative, like uh, the skull on the chest piece or uh, the handle on the knife or any place like that. If you find any places you want to stand out a little bit more as uh, some something decorative, you can use this color on those areas. Once that's done, we're done with all of the base coats. I'm going to start washing this model with gnome oil. And for most of the places such as the leather, the bolter, the knife, and the, the grenades and stuff like that, we can just uh, shade the whole entire thing. And for the, the armor, I'm just going to paint with a small layer brush into just the recesses of those areas, just to make sure that there's a shadow in uh, the places and lines that separate each armor piece. And if I use a little bit too much, uh, I can come back with normal rust gray again and clean up uh, the excess wash. Uh, but I'm going to try to be as careful as possible just to get into those recesses and not clean up as much. And uh, that way we're going to have a nice uh, shadow uh, under those uh, edges. Uh, also, you could use um, other washes if you want. If you want it to be a little bit more blue, uh, you can use uh, a blue wash. Or if you want a brown, you can use Agrax Earthshade. But because this is a gray armor or something like that, I think black works the best. And also don't forget to shake well the wash before using it because it also separates a lot. So it's very important that you do that. Once it's done, I'm going to continue washing. For that, I'm going to use Raikland Flesh Shade and this is going to go over all the hair and the face of this model just to give it a very nice uh, brownish reddish wash onto the recesses of the skin. And that's it. And lastly, I'm going to use a wash of Seraphim Sepia and this is going to go over the edges of the shoulder pad on all, all of the recesses on the borders of the shoulder pad and also on all of the places that are going to be gold. With this wash, you can leave the model as it is and use this as a tabletop model. Uh, you can continue highlighting as I will, uh, but like this, it's a very good, cool model that it's uh, all painted and washed and it looks pretty good on the table. Next, I'm going to highlight the skin. For that, I'm going to start with Cadian Flesh Tone. And with this color, I'm going to pick up most of the area of the skin, leaving the recesses on the previous color. Just try to leave the places that are in shadow and the places that are in recesses in the previous color and just paint most of the area with this color again and clean it up. And um, if you want, when you're highlighting this model, you can just pick up the most important parts for you which if you didn't want to do a lot of highlighting in this model, I think you could just highlight the skin and leave the model as it is. And it's going to be completely fine. It's going to look very good, uh, but yeah. After that, I'm going to apply a second highlight with Kislev Flesh. And this one is going to go only on the most prominent parts and the most uh, pointy parts of the skin, which is the eyebrows, the, the tip of the nose, and any place that you find that is very sharp or uh, very prominent, you can use a little bit of this color and it's going to give the illusion of, of a very sharp highlight and it's going to make it pop a lot more. Next, I'm going to highlight the black and for that I'm going to use Eschen Gray and with this color I'm going to pick up all of the edges of the black 
uh, with a fine detail brush and I'm just going to try to do as thin as a line as I can on all of those edges and in the places in between the 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 armor pieces such as in the lower torso behind the knee pads and any places like that you just try to pick uh, all of the grooves and uh, little details uh, so that it pops a little bit more and that it gives three-dimensionality to those areas if you want to continue highlighting the black I'm going to use downstone and with this color I'm going to pick a smaller area on the places that I painted last step but leaving a little bit of the alt, co alt color behind and only on the most sharpest parts or the most uh, prominent parts uh, that is going, they are going to catch the most light and uh, being very careful to just use a tiny bit of it, just a little dot on it, places here and there is going to make it pop a lot. For tabletop, I don't like highlighting black. It doesn't show that much, uh, but it looks cool when you do it from, uh, from closer. Uh, but if you want to keep it simple, I would say just uh, pick the two most important colors of your color scheme and highlight them and uh, Just uh, let the other colors just be base coated and washed. That's fine Once it's done, I'm going to start edge highlighting all of the armor and for that I'm going to use Fenrish in gray you can skip this step if you really don't want to do it But if you do it, it's going to make the armor pop a lot more uh, and it's going to be the most time-consuming step, but it's going to make the armor look very three-dimensional and very the edges are going to just pop and the miniature is going to look a little bit more like the The images you see on the cover art uh, for the space walls and it really helps to have a uh, thin down paint when you're doing this just enough so it doesn't have a lot of resistance on your paint, paint palette when you move it with the brush and also twist the tip of your brush when you're adjusting the paint of your brush so that it creates a fine tip and just you can freehand most of them but whenever you see a very sharp edge you can just use the side of it and just let the brush work with you uh, but yeah I'm going to try to pick all of the edges like this and if you decide to do it it's going to look something like this once it's done, uh, the model art, the model's armor is really popping and I'm going to continue highlighting. I'm going to move on to the browns. I'm going to use Scrag Brown and this is going to go over both the hair and the pouches of uh, dark leather. And this is going to be an edge highlight. I'm just going to try to pick all of those edges and try to contour those uh, uh, very uh, dark areas so they pop a little bit more and their their uh, shape is defined by the edge highlight and uh, being very careful just to paint the very edge and not paint on any other area that we've already painted and yeah that's it uh, the same way that we highlighted the the armor just in the the hair and the pouches and also you could use uh, liquid drying retarder that's going to help keep the paint wet for longer or you can use a wet palette to keep your paint wet. It's going to help a lot with your edge highlights. Once all those edges are defined, I'm going to continue highlighting with Deathclaw Brown and it's going to go over just the sharpest areas of the pouches and the hair. And just a little dot on those uh, edges or uh, just a little line on the corners. And that's going to be enough to make them pop that much more and it's going to look very good. Also in the hair, try to pick the most sharpest parts, just the very front tip and maybe the peak, the peak of those curves when it's curves to the side and to the top. And that's it. Once we're done with the browns, I'm going to move on to the silvers. For that, I'm going to just use Stormhost Silver. And I'm going to start picking up all of the edges of the silver, just uh, trying to leave the recesses and most of the color behind as it is. Uh, but I'm going to try to pick the most prominent parts of the silver and just give them, give them an edge highlight. And that's going to define their shape very well. And try to use uh, thin paint and be very careful not to overdo it uh, so that it doesn't look messy. And uh, that's it. And to finish this model up, I'm going to just highlight the gold with Liber Liberator Gold. You could, use, you could also use the silver and it's going to make it pop even more, but I'm going to just keep it uh, toned down and use Liberator Gold only. And I'm going to use this on all of the most uh, sharpest edges and prominent parts of the gold just to give it a, a shiny 
um, silvery gold uh, highlight to all of these places and leave the recesses and the main color on the most prominent parts uh, but just try to pick uh, like here on the skull I'm just trying to pick pick the, the brow and the sharpest places of the blade the very top of the skull and places like that and with that we are done with this model and this is the finished model I have to say I had a lot of fun painting this model this color scheme is very easy it's a little bit time consuming when you're doing all of the edge highlights on all of the armor pieces but for a kill team of five guys doing all of these steps is going to be very rewarding in my opinion if you're not trying to collect a whole army of space wolves going through the whole process is not going to be that hard and that time consuming and you're going to end up with a pretty good good looking team of five uh, primary space wolves that are going to look awesome and because they're well painted they're going to perform very well on your games so that's it thank you very much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it and that you find it entertaining and helpful and if you did please like this video comment on it and subscribe to the channel to see more videos let me know what you think about this tutorial and if you want you can leave suggestions for future videos and stuff like that you can find me on facebook you can message me and uh, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next video. You stayed. Great. Thank you very much for supporting my channel. And if you would like to become a patron, there is a link to my Patreon page in the description below. Your contributions help pay for my work and keeps the channel going. A single dollar a month is more than enough and you can cancel at any time. If you can't, don't worry, you can support my channel by simply watching my videos and sharing them with your friends. Thank you for watching, have a great day and I'll see you on the next one.